All right, let's get more on robotics in China with Martin Ford. He's joining us live from Stanford, California. He's the author of Rise of the Robots Technology and the Threat of a Jobless Future. Martin, thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me. Martin, in the past three years, China has bought more industrial robots than any other country, including high-tech giants like Germany and Japan. And according to the International Federation of Robotics, by the end of this year, China will overtake Japan to be the world's biggest operator of industrial robots. Martin, why is China on such an aggressive push to automate? Well, I think it's, it's a national strategy, and it's something that they have to do, in part because wages have been rising in China. Um, and they don't want to see uh, other countries, you know, take their factories away. That, that could happen in two ways. It could be because lower wage countries like Indonesia or Vietnam uh, attract uh, manufacturing with even lower wage rates, or it's because of reshoring, because as technology advances, uh, factories are simply becoming more automated in advanced countries, so the rationale for placing those factories in uh, China is undermined. So China wants to remain competitive, and that's why it's making this huge push into robotics. Well, Martin, keeping in mind that China scaled its economy to the second largest in the world on the strength of its manufacturing, what does this shift to robotics now mean for the large number of people dependent on those manufacturing jobs? Well, that's a real question, and that's, that's the issue that I've really been focused on and writing about. I think that, you know, we're going to enter a future where there are dramatically fewer jobs, and that's especially true in manufacturing because, you know, factories have always been a place where this technology has had a major impact. But it's even true now in the service sector. I mean, China is going to start building service robots, and, and we have smart software robots that are going to take many desk jobs. So across the board, really, the whole economy is going to become a lot less labor intensive. There are going to be fewer jobs out there. This is a big problem, not just for China, but really for the whole world. But surely, Martin, are there some menial tasks that humans can do that robots just do not have the same skill set, the same ability to adapt, to use intuition? Some jobs are just exclusive to human capabilities or not? For, for the time being, that's certainly true. I mean, there are jobs that require um, levels of dexterity and mobility and the, the ability to perceive things visually that, that really only human beings to do, can do, but the robots are getting dramatically better than that, uh, at, at doing that, and those jobs may never. Uh, they're quite high uh, for designing something entirely new, and those jobs for the moment are also safe. But as we look ahead far into the future, maybe 20 years, 30 years, uh, you really can't say that any job at all is, is absolutely safe. As uh, we move towards this robotic trend, and this push particularly in China has been heavily subsidized and promoted by the government, so surely that in itself is going to provide some economic opportunities and more jobs? Yes, I mean, it's definitely going to help their, their economy. So smart is going to become slower robotics. Uh, and with something else involved, with robots are going to become a lot cheaper, a lot more affordable, a lot more accessible to the whole world, and that means that they're going to be deployed more and more and that's going to impact jobs. So what you see metering generally is the same story you've seen in the United States. You know, the amount that you output can increase, but the jobs don't increase because you're, you're producing, you know, with machines. Um, and that's true of robots as well. I mean, robots are going to build robots. So doubtless there's going to be a huge Chinese robot manufacturing industry. The question is how many jobs are there, are there going to be in that industry? Maybe not so many. Well, robots are going to be old robots, but we're still going to need the programmers and uh, the operators. Now, Martin, we've seen that Foxconn that supplies Apple and Samsung has reportedly already replaced 60,000 factory workers with robots. Which other industries or sectors are most likely to be automated next, sooner rather than later? Well, I mean, it's really across the board. I, I think asking which industry is, is kind of the wrong question, because it's going to be all industries, and it's not going to be just manufacturing. As I said, it's really going to be in the service sector as well. If Foxconn can build robots that can do precision iPhone manufacturing, then certainly we can also make robots that can flip hamburgers or make coffee drinks or do all kinds of things in the service sector as well. Um, Self-driving cars are another example of a kind of robot that could have an enormous impact. I mean, there are just millions and millions of people that have jobs driving vehicles, and, and eventually those jobs may disappear. So this is just going to have a huge impact across the board. So what would be the global uh, implications of this, given uh, that China manufactures currently about 
25% of the world's goods. Well, I, it's a huge global issue because the, the thing to keep in mind is that if people don't have jobs, then they don't have money to spend. Or if they're not making much money because their, their wages are very low due to competition, then they don't have much to spend. Um, you just heard a, a report a couple of minutes ago saying that the manufacturing sector in China has been relatively weak. I mean, why is that? That's because there isn't demand out there. There aren't enough customers to buy what China is capable of, being, of uh, producing. And that could get to be a bigger problem. Um, if we produce more and more robots, and these robots and software technologies and so forth get better and better, and they take over more jobs, then that means fewer consumers to really drive demand, to you know, fewer people to come buy what's being produced. So Martin, what do you suggest? What is the solution? What is the alternative? One cannot fight against this trend. So how do you balance this risk of employment with the need to innovate? Right. I don't think we want to stop this trend at all. I mean, robots are a positive thing. They're going to, you know, make things more affordable. They're going to do things that people can't do. They're going to take over a lot of jobs that people don't want or that are dangerous and so forth. And that's all great. But I do think that we're going to have to adapt to this economically. So I go around speaking to a lot of people in different countries. And the idea that is sort of rising to the top right now is that eventually we may need something like a, a guaranteed income or a universal basic income so that everyone regardless of whether they can find a, a full-time job or not, will have access to an income so that they can survive economically and so that they can also have money to spend and be a consumer and drive the economy. And that's, that may be the future that we're headed toward eventually. You paint a bleak picture. Thanks so much, Martin Ford, author of Rise of the Robots, Technology and the Threat of a Jobless Future. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.